Now, let's discuss treatment of a specific type of shock. Treatment of hypovolemic shock. Initial acute critical care management. A, airway. B, breathing. C, circulation. D, disability. Drugs. E, exposure. As primary assessment and resuscitation should be done. Main goals after ABC. Stop the bleeding. Restore the volume. Correct any electrolyte or acid-based disturbances. Volume replacement. How to proceed. If there is less than 15% blood loss, 500 milliliters, one liter of crystalloids are given. If the patient responds by rapid improvement of blood pressure, heart rate, urine output, they are categorized as rapid responder. If there is 15 to 40% blood loss, 500 milliliters, one liter of crystalloids are given. If the patient improvement is only for a brief period of time and then again deteriorates, they are categorized as transient responder. Continue crystalloid with or without blood transfusion and consult surgeon for control of bleeding. If there is greater than 40% blood loss, two liters of crystalloid, two units of blood are given. If there is no response, they are categorized as non-responder. They need immediate control of bleeding which require immediate laparotomy, thoracotomy. Volume replacement, how to monitor. During resuscitation, certain minimum monitoring modalities and more advanced monitoring techniques are essential to assess a patient's condition and guide appropriate interventions. Minimum modalities include electrocardiogram, pulse oximetry, blood pressure, urine output. Additional modalities include central venous pressure, invasive blood pressure, cardiac output, base deficit in serum lactate. Treatment of septic shock. Septic shock is a medical emergency that requires prompt and efficient resuscitation. If possible, the patient should be admitted to the intensive care unit. Aims of treatment. Improve hemodynamic state. Restore tissue perfusion, thereby increasing oxygen delivery to tissue. Administer oxygen, combat bacteria and cytokines. Eliminate septic focus. Resuscitation, volume replacement. Intravenous access with wide board cannulas. Crystalloids should be given and urethral catheter is passed to empty the bladder then to monitor the hourly urine output. Normal urine output, 30 to 50 milliliters per hour. Central venous catheter is inserted. Hypervolemia will read from 10 to 15 centimeters H2O. Vasopressor. If the patient is hypotensive during or after fluid resuscitation to maintain a mean arterial pressure of more than 65 millimeters of mercury. Norepinephrine. First line of septic shock refractory to volume replacement. Dopamine. Is used as a systemic vasoconstrictor, enotropic agent, or renal vasodilator, depending on the dosage. Oxygen administration. It's delivered by a face mask to increase oxygen saturation, increase oxygen delivery, and uptake by tissues. Antibiotic. Give in large doses via the intravenous route to combat infection. Empirical antibiotics, which are broad-spectrum, bactericidal, and have anaerobe coverage, third-generation cephalosporins, along with intravenous metronidazole, are used. Steroids. Steroids inhibit the conversion of membrane phospholipid to arachidonic acid, hence inhibiting the release of secondary mediators. Hydrocortisone is used. Glycemic control. Hyperglycemia and insulin resistance are typical in critically ill and septic patients, including patients without underlying diabetes mellitus. Insulin infusion may be needed in those patients. Surgery. If septic focus is responsible for the shock, it should be dealt with as soon as possible, especially if the response to therapy is poor, for example, debridement, drainage of the abscess. Treatment of cardiogenic shock. Ensure adequate airway and ventilation. If required, intubation and mechanical ventilation as maintenance of adequate oxygenation is required to ensure adequate myocardial oxygen delivery. Electrolyte abnormalities, commonly hypokalemia and hypomagnesemia, should be corrected.
intravenous morphine sulfate or fentanyl for pain. Dysrhythmias and heart block must be treated with antiarrhythmic drugs, pacing, or cardioversion if necessary. Dibutamine stimulates cardiac beta-1 receptors to increase cardiac output but may also vasodilate peripheral vascular beds, lower total peripheral resistance, and lower systemic blood pressure through beta-2 receptors. Ensure adequate preload and intravascular volume is essential before starting dibutamine. Dopamine stimulates dopamine receptors, vasoconstriction, beta-1 receptors, cardiac stimulation, beta-2 receptors, vasodilation, Dopamine is preferable to dibutamine in treatment of cardiac dysfunction in hypotensive patients. Catecholamines must be used carefully. Amrinone and milrinone, phosphodiesterase inhibitors, are used in resistant cardiogenic shock. Intraaortic balloon pump in case of patient refractory to cardiotonic. Anticoagulation in aspirin in acute myocardial infarction. Beta blockers are used to control heart rate and reduce myocardial oxygen demand. Nitrates help to increase coronary blood flow through vasodilation. Angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors are used to reduce angiotensin-converting enzyme-mediated vasoconstrictive effects that increase myocardial workload and myocardial oxygen consumption. Percutaneous transluminal coronary angiography with stent placement is recommended in acute myocardial infarction. Treatment of neurogenic shock. Patient must be admitted in the intensive care unit for the best monitoring. After the airway is secured and ventilation is adequate, fluid resuscitation and restoration of intravascular volume often improve perfusion and neurogenic shock. Appropriate and rapid restoration of blood pressure and circulation may improve perfusion to the spinal cord, prevent progressive spinal cord ischemia, and minimize secondary cord injury. Administration of vasoconstrictors will improve peripheral vascular tone, decrease vascular capacitance, and increase venous return, but considered once only after hypovolemia is excluded. Dopamine may be used first if the patient's blood pressure has not responded to what is felt to be adequate volume resuscitation. A pure alpha agonist, phenylephrine, may be used primarily or in patients unresponsive to dopamine. Stabilization of vertebral fracture after adequate resuscitation. That's all for the video. We'll see you next time.